Welcome to the Lore Sworn War College for Hearts of Iron 4. Congratulations, you've made it to our advanced series. In the 300 series, we're going to teach you about the supply system and also air warfare and naval combat. This is lesson 301, Supply and Logistics. Now, supply is one of the most complicated concepts you're going to come up against in Hearts of Iron 4, but luckily the supply area map mode will give you at least a basic understanding of what's going on and how to fix problems. When you're managing supply, the two questions you're going to want to ask yourself, can my troops currently get supplies from my capital, and does the area I'm fighting in have enough supply to support the number of troops fighting there? Supply in Hearts of Iron 4 represents things like food, medical supplies, ammunition, and fuel, and they'll always make their way to your army from wherever your capital province is. So, say I was fighting a battle in Texas. As you can see, the supply is finding the best possible land route that is not blocked by enemy occupation, to get supplies to my troops that are fighting there. If it can't find a land route, such as the case with Puerto Rico, it will either try to find a sea route directly from your capital, if your capital has a port, or find a route from your capital to a port, and then to a neighboring port and overland to wherever you need your supply to be. Keep in mind that supply routes in Hearts of Iron 4 can only cross water once. So you couldn't have supply flowing from Louisiana into the Yucatan Peninsula, and then again out of Guatemala and into Ecuador. This makes holding territories like the Panama and Suez Canals very important, as canals count as part of a continuous sea route and allow you to bypass the only one water voyage restriction that would normally keep you from being able to get supplies from the Gulf of Mexico to somewhere like the western coast of South America. Units that are cut off from supply cannot receive any reinforcements, meaning any equipment and manpower that is lost, whether that be in combat or from attrition, will not be replenished at all. You'll also gain a ticking debuff that gets worse over time, which will increase your attrition and decrease your combat effectiveness. On top of the debuff you'll already be getting for having not enough manpower and equipment to fill up your divisions. Being out of supply is really bad and your enemies being out of supply is really good. So cutting off an enemy's supply routes can be an extremely effective way at giving you an edge in battle, especially if you're up against a superior foe. The other thing to take into account about supply is how many troops a given area can support. This is a function of how developed or fertile the region you're fighting is in general, combined with how many incoming supplies you have through your supply line from other areas. You should also keep in mind that incoming supplies from your capital will be restricted by the lowest supply province they pass through on the way. So let's say the Axis powers have blockaded the Strait of Gibraltar, and I'm playing as the US, and I have some troops fighting in the Middle East. I can't get a supply line through the Mediterranean because of the blockade, so my supplies will be flowing from Washington across the Atlantic and then through North Africa to my troops, which is not terrible, as long as we own a continuous supply line along the way. Now, if the Axis were to cut off the coast of North Africa, even if we still hold the Sahara, that means that my supplies are having to pass through much lower supply provinces, meaning I won't be able to get as many of them to my troops fighting in the Levant, and by cutting off that North African coast, I have been put in a situation where I have a subpar supply line. And of course, you can always use that to your advantage against an enemy who is fighting in an out-of-supply area as well. It's also important to note that any supply lines that go across water are going to use convoys. If you don't have enough convoys in your convoy stockpile, which is always visible up here, you're going to need to build more to be able to ship supplies across the ocean efficiently. Also, if you have any enemy submarines attacking your convoy lines, they'll decrease the efficiency with which your convoys can get supplies across the ocean. But we'll talk about that more when we do our videos on naval combat later in this course. There's a lot of complicated math related to the supply system, which you can read up more on on the Hearts of Iron 4 official wiki if you care to. 
but really the main points to remember are that you need a clear line over sea and land from your capital to be able to supply your troops. Every province can support a certain number of troops, and going over that will increase your attrition. Incoming supply from other provinces can increase the amount of troops you can support in a given province, but the weakest link in your supply chain will determine how much benefit you actually get from those incoming supplies. And divisions that have no access to a supply line from your capital will accrue extremely punishing penalties and probably die if you can't make a breakthrough somewhere and get them back into supply. That should cover the basics of what you need to know about the supply system. It's definitely worth your while to get comfortable and familiar with it, because wars can be won and lost based on the availability of supply and denying supply to your enemy. We'll see you next time when we start breaking down the stats for air units and getting ready to talk about air combat.